Welcome back to another ep another weekly episode of uh, video game updates for the week for week 31 of the year, which spans from July was it 26? Sorry, July 28th to August uh, 3rd. So the week that we're currently in, and this is being recorded, and as you can tell by the orb over there, it's July 31st. Um, we are going to be covering just a uh, couple games and or a few games technically uh for sure we're we're diving back into world of warcraft updates that we have uh that may have came out since last week and we're also talking about week two of season five for <laughs> call of duty and warzone and um, then we'll be touching base on just some miscellaneous games this should be a shorter episode than uh, more of our recent ones and that's just because there's there's you know not much going on right now with world of warcraft prepping for uh its dlc which we'll cover more um here shortly and call of duty just launched season five last week so they're kind of just they've already kicked off all the major news now it's just fillers for a time being until mid-season so here in about uh three weeks and then we have other news coming out of the gaming industry as well so with that said sit back and enjoy as we dive into this week's Patches, updates, hot fixes, and more. Let's get after y'all. All right, and first off, we are looking at World of Warcraft. Um, again, August twenty sixth. So here in about three, a little over three weeks, we're going to have the uh, DLC, the War Within, launch on their servers everywhere, where you'll be able to play it, and it's. It's said to be, I believe it's, it's the last one, like the, the linear series, or whatever you want to call it. Basically, after this, we're going to see a whole new uh, outcome of Azeroth as a whole. Uh, so I'm per I'm personally super excited for it. I can't wait. Um, I can't wait to see how the story plays out, what's to come of it over the next year or two. So super excited. Um, also, if you, you haven't already played Dragonflight, Dragonflight has an amazing storyline as well. Um, introduce a lot of cool features, which I will discuss at the end of this section. So, but anyways, let's get into it. We're going to be covering, uh, we're just going to be covering July 30th uh, update, which is what happened yesterday as of this recording. So these are hot fixes, everything they quickly did to uh, fix issues, of course. So without further ado, let's get into it. Starting off first with World of Warcraft updates. We have classes. Uh, this week they updated one class. At the time of this recording, there will be more hot fixes later this week. Uh, but July 30th hot fix was for the class of Hunter. They corrected an issue causing the application of kill zone debuff to interrupt casts and channels. Then for Dungeons and Raids, Brackenhide Hollow, they addressed an issue where Tree Mouth was correctly dropping to 1 HP when consuming. They addressed an issue where Tree Mouth was not properly gaining Starving Frenzy when falling to consume someone in Mythic Difficulties. Which I actually just did this one a few days ago and we like we just backed out because it was causing issues. So that's that's cool. We'll run it again later this week. And then for the quest, players can now complete Others Call Me Duck Herder. So that's that's good. It's like that gave up on that one. Uh, next up, we have Season of Discoveries. There are there are several, so scan to Shards of Scales and Flame Set bonus is now active. Activated by all spells was only direct healing and spell damage. Now it's all. Uh, Anathema and Benediction can now correctly be swapped after a one minute cooldown has been passed. And then for Molten Core, there is a few issues they have fixed with Molten Core, such as fix an issue that prevented. Uh, Shazra from casting Gate of Shazra twice in a row on Heat 3. Uh, Ragnaros no longer submerges twice on Heat 1. Bear and Gaiden now cast Armageddon at 5% on Heat 1. It was 10%. Bear and Gaiden now cast two Living Bombs at the time of Heat 2. Was 3. Living Bomb no longer leaves Living Fallout pools on Heat 1. Flame Waker Protectors now cast Dominant Mine much less frequently. Maximize the cast and recast times of several dispels me uh, mechanics. Damage done to self with spells such as Hellfire is no longer increased by the low fire resistance effect on heat levels 2 and 3 in Molten Core. And then to round this up, for Season of Discovery there was two class updates. 
Uh, Mage had one update. Mass regeneration range for detecting allies to heal increased to 43 yards was 30. Uh, to eliminate the situation where it was possible to heal others who were outside the range of your heal to apply to yourself. Uh, for priests, they got two. Uh, I'm going to butcher this one. Uh, Human Coley now casts and stacks Sunder Armor re uh, re relative to the rank they would have if they were a warrior of their level. Developer note is... This takes the place of their casting degrade previously. Now a friendly warrior can refresh a Humicoli's five stack of Sunder Armor. The strength of this debuff at max level is unchanged. And then the last change for this week is for the priest is Spirit of the Redeemer will now correctly put pain suppression and dispersion on a two minute cooldown was incorrectly set to five minutes. Um, and then just because this technically happened this week, so we're, we're going to cover it too. So I like we're doing two days. July 29th, updates and hot fixes. They had two classes overall for the game. Priest fixed an issue where Void Summoner was providing twice as much cooldown reduction than intended. Shaman, they corrected an issue that was preventing the Sky Fury buff from allowing melee attacks to gain extra Wind Fury swings. For player versus player, also known as PvP, Fixed an issue in Rated Battleground Blitz where the PvP item level was incorrectly scaling on the Eye of the Storm. Quests, they had two fix. Fixed a bug preventing um, Arden Wield Gardeners from looting the Wild Seed of Regrowth in Queen's Conservatory. Players can now interact with the Wild Seeds in the Queen's Conservatory to complete Tending to the Wild Seeds. Cool, I can do that now. Uh, actually, that's the day I... No, I did it on the 27th. Uh, onwards, while we remix, Miss Pandaria had one update. Adjusted the power levels of all remix content to account for unintentionally increased difficulty with patch 11.0.0. Cataclysm Classic got two updates. All original WoW Classic PvP gear is now usable on as transmog appearance. All of these pieces of armor have been and will continue to be available from the Legacy Armor and Legacy Weapons Quartermaster. In both the hall, the Champions Hall in Stormwind, and the Hall of Legends in Orgrimmar, they fixed in the bug preventing Supreme Defender from incrementing correctly when killing flag carriers in Warsong Gulch. Then to round this all out, we have, or sorry, I guess not to round it out, we saw two more. Season of Discovery is next up, and there's quite a bit, so bear with me. Players who have the 18 slot version of Bottomless Bag may now exchange the bag or the pattern for the 20 slot version at Rick's Zixies in Booty Bay. I know I butchered that. Players who have killed Magmadar but are unable to douse the Rune of Crest can now swap the heat difficulty back and forth and should find you can now douse the Rune. Lava, lava Surgers and Molten Core will no longer spawn once Ragnaros has been defeated, they fix an issue with many of the class dungeon set bonuses. They can only be triggered by abilities and not by items use. Um, next is Ragnaros is no longer immune to Paladin's Hand of Reckoning. Fix the bug interrupting eating or drinking when near a graveyard. Fix the bug where the incorrect version of Quelsira could appear in the version of the game. Uh, with Weekly restarts, this one set. So the next one up starts off with week, with weekly restarts. The increased damage taken for, for low fire resistance and molten core on Heat 2 and Heat 3 has been reduced, but is still extremely dangerous. Characters who are at 30 resistance lower than intended should now expect to take about three times the normal damage. Was guaranteed fatal. A uh, developer note on this is this is intended to allow players who are dependent upon resistance totems or paladin ores to have a chance to survive, if briefly not within the range of those effects. Next up, they have classes for the Season of Discoveries. Hunter, with this also is with the weekly restart, which happens uh, on Tuesday. Uh, Entrapment now triggers a diminishing return as a root effect on players each time it is applied. Subsequent duration will be halved and then quartered in duration and then will target. Then the target will become immune for 30 seconds. Lastly, for hunters, they fix a bug that prevented hunters from being able to interact with four demons involved in the Roque. Oh, I hate this name. Roque Delar quest chain. Next up, we have the priest. 
fix an issue where respecking did not remove divine spirit appropriately. Rogue, the one, the six piece tier one bonus no longer puts vanish on cooldown. Shaman, you can no longer have burn or I'm sorry, you can no longer have burn and way of earth activated at the same time by using rock biter rank three. Warlocks, shadow flame will no longer be overwritten by improved shadow bolt. Last up for a season of discovery, warrior. The Warrior 2 piece tier 1 bonus technician will no longer be consumed if the spell casts with a free Blood Surge Slam. And then finally, around the rest of this week up, we have um, the Classic Era got an update. They have two of them. Fix a bug that caused extra lava surges in Molten Core. Fix a bug where the incorrect version of Quell Sarara could appear in the version of the game. That is pretty much all for World of Warcraft. Um, again, DLC War Within comes out August 26, uh, 2024. And if you haven't already, I definitely recommend getting into it. Um, and don't become an addict to this like Roggle apparently is. Um, you can hear him and I talk about it during our weekly episodes. Um, other than that, if you... If you're like myself and you play this game and the one thing that kind of held you back was dungeons and a lot of people don't seem to know this and i didn't know about it until like this last week so don't feel bad but i have noticed a lot of people from my live streams didn't know this was a thing so i wanted to just mention it here too as well is if you're like me and you you didn't normally do dungeons because you have to queue and in true fashion if you're not a healer there is a very long wait time tanks uh, queue up uh, second quickest. Uh, when I play as my tank, I queue up in a matter of like five to seven minutes. But when I play as my DPS, uh, I queue up probably 20, 15, 20 minutes. It's a very long wait time for, for playing as DPS because that's what mass majority plays as. Uh, if I was a healer and I, I, I could be a reliable healer, it'd be different. But anyways... So if you are struggling to do a dungeon for like a quest or you just want to learn how to do a dungeon more efficiently and uh, learn like the routes, the mechanisms, the rotations and like try out some experimentations on it. There is and they introduced this back in uh, late 2000, like in the 2022, early 2023. So this is still technically relatively new, which is why I get most people don't know about it and it wasn't made a big deal. But you now can do what's called a follower's dungeon, which is you running the dungeon with NPCs, non-playable, non-playable characters. Uh, and it just it makes it super easy to get dungeon quest based or sorry, dungeon based quests done uh, properly and not having to sit there in a queue. The only downside I'm finding to it, finding to it is the fact that you're not going to get great gear. And I have yet to get even like Eh, okay year um but i have been running and it's only for dragonflight dungeons i guess i should say um but i i have found out that it drops your mats like crazy so i've been finding a lot of mats materials to use and i, I filled up a whole bag in one rotation of dungeons so definitely check it out very useful um, I also feel like the dungeon and maybe my guy is just over spec and kitted out and I don't know it, uh, which very likely, but the dungeons also feel a lot easier compared to the time, the one or two times I ran dungeons with others this last week. So definitely check out again, it's just called follower dungeon. Um, you just click down, you click on the drop down menu and you'll see a slew where it says like regular dungeon, specific dungeon, heroic dungeon, mythic dungeon, whatever. And at the very top it says followers. So just want to mention that if you know about cool, awesome. I've asked numerous people on World of Warcraft when I was playing and no one really seemed to know about it or they just maybe didn't care. I don't know. I don't care anymore. I know about it. So I'm going to share the knowledge with y'all. But so, but that is that. That wraps up World of Warcraft. Um, onward to Call of Duty and then we'll do a miscellaneous one. So let's get after it. All right. Next up, we have Call of Duty. I'm going to break this up into two parts. Uh, you only really notice it down here on the titles. Uh, but starting off, we're going to talk about Modern Warfare 3. Update for Season, season 5, Week 2. So, not much here, but let's get after it. Uh, so, for Modern Warfare 3 Edition, 
there was a global update. They correct uh, customization corrected the categorization of base camos for the STG44 and the static HV weapons. Uh, onward to multiplayer, the UIX had some updates. Bugs fix include battle pass tokens earned via weekly challenges. Completion are now displayed in the after action report. Pressing learn more in the store will no longer return the previous menu. Placeholder splash is no longer displayed after unlocking the Jack Decimator kit. Corrected the icon display for the Havoc mode and then removed the redundant terminology and splashes for hardcore mode names. Progression had an update. Decreased the decreased Interstellar Mastery Challenge completion target from 500 to 400 operator kills for the STG-44 and static HV weapons. Uh, weapons and attachments. We have a we have three of them. Uh, for some machine guns, we have the Ram 9. Brune Heavy Support Grip Underbarrel Attachment is no longer able to be equipped without a compatible barrel. Uh, handguns, we have the Core 45. Increased rate of fire from 240 RPMs to 450 RPM, which is an 88% improvement. The XRK TR9 Trigger Action. Decreased rate of fire penalty from negative 25% to negative 15%. XRK Lightning Fire Trigger Action. Decreased rate of fire benefit from 25% to 22%. The tier handgun, uh, Hell's Reach short barrel. Incompatible optic attachments are no longer able to be equipped. So that, I guess that's a good slash bad fix. Um, last up they have melee. The push dagger added heavy swing melee functionality. Oh, awesome. And then beast glove blueprint added a ragdoll effect to heavy swing melee functionality. All right. And then last up we have ranked play they restricted the quartermaster suppressor muzzle attachment and then zombies there's just one update stability fix an issue causing some players to encounter an instance inventory timing out error so that is that for modern warfare 3. let's go on to warzone now all right for warzone there's just a few uh it's customization is still the same. They corrected the categorization of base camo for the SCG-44 inside the HV weapon. Uh, Warzone weapons, same for the Ram 9, talking about the brew and heavy support grip. Underbarrel attachment is no longer able to be equipped without a compatible barrel. Uh, Warzone though, the Supri-46 max damage range had, uh, is decreased to 12.7 meters, which is down from 13.97. Uh, they've also removed the mid mid damage range min minimum damage of 25 now starts at 25.4 meters instead of 34.3 meters so uh, that got a little hurt so that's fine that's good that's an overpower weapon um same for the handguns the core 45 the increase the rate of fire to 450 up from 240 the xrk tr9 uh, trigger action Decrease rate of file penalty to negative 15, down from negative 25. XRK lightning fire trigger uh, action is also decreased rate of fire benefit to 22, down from 25. Uh, for the tier handgun, Hell's Reach short barrel, incompatible optic attachments are no longer able to be equipped. And then the melee, same for the push, dag push dagger, added heavy swing melee functionality along with beast glove blueprint, added a ragdoll effect for the heavy. Uh, the only reason why I went over those again other than the fact that the Supreme 46 isn't there, is sometimes it's there are certain updates for weapons on Warzone that don't happen for Modern Warfare 3, like we saw with the Supreme 46, or vice versa. There's updates in Modern, War, uh, Modern Warfare 3, talking most about the multiplayer and zombies, that doesn't get converted over to Warzone. So that's the only reason why I like doubling that up and making sure like, it's very clear. So do you get those updates? Okay. Last, lastly, they fix these bugs. Uh, there's four of them. Fix an issue preventing the third Warzone Reward Mobility Challenge, which is visit five unique POIs in a single match from tracking properly. This was updated actually today, July 31st. Uh, they fix an issue preventing players from seeing the scoreboard or stat tab when opening the TAC map. Fix an issue preventing the Warzone Reward submenu from updating properly after a player completes the Resurgence Champion Quest Challenge. And lastly, Fix an issue preventing players from activating the armory unlock for tactical and lethal equipment. All right, so that is all for for Call of Duty and Warzone. If you want 
uh, a more in-depth look at like the battle pass and you just don't want to do it yourself um, or you do either way you can just go to callofduty.com forward slash patch notes um, or you can go to last week's episode where we do a very 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 big deep dive actually these last two weeks deep dive into uh, the season five battle pass what's to come what's to expect with modes and all that so go check it out otherwise um, if you want to see this stuff in action or you want to watch don't forget thursday nights every thursday night at 8 30 p.m central uh roggle and i play over on our respective channels uh he's over on twitch.tv forward slash roggle r-a-h-g-e-l i am on uh twitch kick youtube tiktok uh d live and uh, yeah that's it uh all at cybermark six so but enough about that let's wrap this episode up with miscellaneous patches and updates let's go all right and wrapping this week's updates and patches we are looking at a few different uh, miscellaneous games and these are just kind of like there's not too much information out there or it's still coming out type situation or this is just brand new information um so but with that said we're going to get into it starting off with Mortal Kombat 1. Um, last week we talked about them introducing uh, Taka uh, Takashi. Uh, so now I'm, I feel like I'm butchering that now so that I'm saying it loud. Anyways, uh, they introduced a new player. This week they introduced the first DLC. Um, and this is called Chaos Reigns. And it's the expansion pack. Here's I'm going to start this off. If you want this, it's $60. 60 US dollars. Um, I'm not happy about that. I'm, I'm going to be completely frank and honest. I'm not excited about paying another $60 for an uh, expansion for a DLC. Um, so, but we'll get into what's coming out. Uh, last week, or this previous Saturday, technically, uh, Nether Realms announced that everybody would have access to the MK95 version of Scorpion. So that, that happened, and then with Chaos Reign, there will be a story expansion. There will be a new combat con. Oh my gosh, struggling today. Combat Pack 2, which will include the Chaos Reign fighters at launch of the DLC, uh, which will include new Sabot, Cyrax, Sector, both of which uh, they did a twist on it. Cyrax and Sector will now be women operating the robotics uh, which is a, a new twist on it i'm excited for it um, guest fighters available post-launch includes one week early access uh, ghost face from scream franchise a t-1000 from terminator 2 and conan the barbarian are coming out uh, if you get if you pre-order or do the chaos rain bundle uh, at least on steam i can't get like it should be the same for playstation and xbox uh, but you will also get the cam, uh, Combat Pack 1 fighters, which will include Omni-Man from Invincible, Quan Chi, Peacemaker from DC's Peacemaker, Ermac, Homelander from The Boys, uh, Takashi, T yeah, Takada Takashi, um, and then you will also get Cameo fighters, uh, Trimmer, Chameleon, Janet Cage, Mavado, and Ferrara, uh, Farah, sorry. And you'll also get the Jean-Claude Van Damme skin for, for Johnny Cage. Um, so that is what is supposed to be included according to the Steam version and what I'm finding. So that is that for uh, Mortal Kombat. Again, I, I'm i excited for the storyline. They haven't really done an expansion of storyline where you can go back and replay it and uh, continue on. It's always been the same damn story when you replay it. So I, I'm so interested in this and i'm so excited for it but at the same time i can't justify uh, the, the cost for this i really can't and this is out so i, I, sh I guess i shouldn't say pre-order you can get this now it's available um i'm just you i'm just not maybe this isn't out game mix 
title, MK1 Chaos Reigns Bundle, release date July 29th, so yeah, that's out. But this was released on July 28th. I hate dealing with Steam from time to time. So anyways, that's Mortal Kombat 1, uh, their updates. We also have a, last week, they announced, and it will be released July 31st, so today at the recording of this, you can now get the Pat McAfee Show Pack within uh, WWE 2K24. So this is the third DLC, and inside of this pack, you'll it includes playable characters, Pat McAfee, Ty Schmidt, Darius Butler, Boston Connor, and AJ Hawk characters, uh, and they will they actually include a usable football too. So there's that, which just came off the the mic drop for Post Malone's up the DLC that came out a while ago. Uh, EC Punk pack came out, so I mean they're they're actually working on it. It's great to see finally. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. There's an update for DL uh, for Destiny 2, but they're gonna kind of release that later on. Um, it should be coming out here in the next couple days. We may cover it. I feel like Destiny 2 is kind of in a, in a funk. If you missed it last week, we talked about Apex Legends. Uh, basically, after the massive amount of negative, super negative feedback, uh, the developers of Apex Legends has came forward and announced that they are uh, fixing the season pass, and that you can now still you can now purchase season pass with your uh, Apex coins. Which prior to season twenty two announcement, prior to the twenty fourth technically of uh, July, they were really just screwing everybody over, so you had to pay. There's no coin usage ability, so happy to see. They finally get their heads out of their butt and listening for a change. Uh, once human, I don't know. I don't know if we would call this an, an update per se. Uh, once human did fix a lot of or is updating stuff a lot as well. Uh, there'll be more information actually next week. This says just reading their updates right now. They did a lot of optimization. This game is kind of under scrutiny because it's like rust but uh mmo so basically every at the end of every season they're going to just wipe it clean so you'll keep all your uh achievements but you'll lose like your base and equipment and that's just kind of uh, pissing a lot of people off so we'll see if anything really comes from that i haven't played this yet i have it downloaded and uh it looks fun but nothing's really kind of came of it and then Pal World got a big update as well um, with new settings such as adding meteorites and supply drop intervals settings into the world. Uh, so you can, you know, you can now change that as well. They bounce, they had a big balance adjustment. Summoning pals will take 25 less damage from all sources, uh, decrease the firepower of enemies on the oil rig, which is new, increase power generation from large generation, adjusted recovery amount. Lower the required technology. Um, base fixes bugs. So, meat can now be purchased from merchants. Bugs fixes are overall improvement notification. When a work pal cannot path correctly, is inside the base. Fix an issue where pals get stuck when transporting. If a chest was moved or the transport route was changed, fix a bug where the fixed assignment to a breeding farm would be removed when the player was not at base. If pals cannot find a route to the breeding farm, when manually assigned, it will now warp directly there. That's good. Fix a bug where harmful random events such as a monster nest occurred within the base. Measures were taken to prevent pals from getting stuck when they were unable to path correctly to a repair kit and remove farm collision to reduce pals getting stuck and clogging their path. That's a big issue for, for Pal World, and that's actually why I stepped away uh, a couple months ago from it because my pals kept being just stuck and then like. There is no fix to other than starting a new route. So good to see they fix a lot of bugs and they're still producing and moving on with it. Um, so that's that's good. But that is pretty much all the updates we have for you right now. So let's wrap this episode up. Alrighty, so that is that again. This is a shorter 
episode thankfully there's there's i'm sure there's more games i could have went into and dived into a little bit more um but that is pretty much it for this week's on the games that roggle or i play mostly me because roggle just plays call of duty um but those are games so world of warcraft it has still minor fixes or minor updates that are happening but again uh war within launches here in less than a month literally it's like three and a half weeks at this point and it's august 26th it's going to be a massive one and i'm, I'm excited uh if you haven't played the beta uh, you're missing out but the pre-expansion update is live so you can actually start the initial quest for it um which is nice when it releases you can just kind of have one step in the door for it call of duty didn't have a lot of updates uh, either for modern warfare 3 or um Warzone, but don't forget you can still pre pre purchase Call of Duty Black Ops 6 and you'll get open beta and early access to play August 30th to September 4th, and then there'll be a public beta September 6th through September 9th. So, um, you know, that's that's there if you want to do it, and you can still claim the, the additional products depending upon which one you purchase. Um, so not much going on in the realm of Activision Blizzard for either of their games. Overwatch didn't have anything. Uh, we got to see that um, bloody hell, Brian, Apex finally listened to their to their people. Power World got some changes. Mortal Kombat is launching a new expansion slash DLC for sixty freaking dollars. I'm hoping maybe a little bit of cyber. Uh, kindness. Uh, hopefully, people can speak up and talk about how bullshit that is to pay sixty dollars, and it's for an expansion. Well, yes, it's a continuation of the story. I do not feel like it's going to be the same length as the original story uh, to justify the sixty dollars. Nor is all the characters themselves worth the sixty dollar uh, price as well. Uh, even though there are bringing Noob Sabot, who has a wicked twist on his his storyline on how he came about same with cyrex and uh cyrex and sector there we go yellow and red robots they are no longer full-fledged cybernetic robots they are basically suits that two women are going to wear and introduce the storyline there which uh interesting background i i love that we're finally getting a proper new storytelling of those two and we'll see if we get um, any more um, we're also going to get the terminator and we're going to get conan the barbarian and uh, the guy from scream so lots of stuff's coming out all real soon so but stay tuned for next week as we dive into week 32 of the year and see what other updates come out as we push closer and closer to um the release of black ops 6 and the release of um, War Within for uh, World of Warcraft. We're going to get probably more and more beefier updates, so those episodes may get to the point where they just have to be little micro-episodes themselves. Uh, so definitely check it out. Otherwise, don't forget to check out the podcast episodes every Thursday here on YouTube or anywhere you get your podcast. And it's just complete randomness as well. And then if you're big into WWE, we release um, episodes over on Ring Rage Report where we cover both before and after um, uh, premiere live events. Also used to be known as uh, pay-per-views. So this week we're dropping on Friday, August 1st. We'll be dropping 2nd. I say correct. August 2nd um, will be Ring Rage Report's prediction episode of WWE's 2004 SummerSlam Premier Live event, and we're talking about all the matches who we think uh, will go in and win versus lose, and Fallout type thing. And then we'll next week we'll have a uh, Fallout episode as well. So, otherwise, check out Rog and I as we play together every Thursday night, 8:30 um, p.m. Central Standard Time. We get together and we play Call of Duty and we have fun. Um, if you're he's over on Twitch, so if you want to find him, it. It's all listed down below in the description, but switch.tv forward slash Roggle. 
Um, and you can find me at Cybermark Sig again, listed down below as well on Twitch, Kick, YouTube, uh, TikTok, D Live, and more. Basically, just anywhere you see Cybermark Sig. Again, list our link down below. So, thank you for tuning in, and we hope to see you on next week's weekly update. But until then, take care, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you on the next episode. Take it easy, y'all.